What's going on YouTube? So the Mercedes GLC has long been one of the most popular luxury compact crossovers money can buy. And that's why this all new Mercedes GLC is so important for the Mercedes brand. So did they hit the bullseye on this one? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so let's get things started here with what's under the hood for this all new GLC. Well, it's not too different for the GLC 300. We have a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine with a new 48 volt mild hybrid system. Power is gonna be 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. It's gonna to be paired to a nine speed automatic transmission, standard rear drive, optional 4MATIC, all wheel drive. Your fuel economy is going to see a big change this year. It's up to 28 miles a gallon combined with rear drive, 26 miles a gallon combined with all wheel drive, which is up four MPG and two MPG respectively. Now, of course, we're gonna take this out on the road for a test drive later in the video, get things like our signature sound level reading. But first we need to shut up the hood and take a look at this new exterior design. So taking a look here at the exterior design, like I said, of course, this is an all new product, but the overall look is not radically different from the outgoing generation. Uh, Mercedes is more of taking a more of an evolutionary approach here with the new GLC, the radical stuff that's for the EQ lineup. That being said, you do see some influence from their newest EQ products. The sh overall shape here of this front grille is a little bit softer, a little bit more round than it was before. And you, of course, have several different versions depending on which model you have. Today's example we're showing you has the AMG line package. It does also have the night package. So what that's going to do is black out some of the elements like this piece that's going across here, as well as the trim around the grille and down here on the lower face, which all looks more aggressive because it is the AMG line. Now let's come over here to our headlights. With this new generation, we have standard LED headlights across the entire lineup. This is the uh, base version. It's gonna be a reflector beam LED with a LED daytime running light and turn signal indicator. However, you can now get a new system called digital light as an option. What that is, is a very advanced LED headlight, which has projection abilities as well as full adaptive abilities. And it can highlight certain objects and project different warning symbols actually out onto the road. So a very, very neat system. Now, as we move around to the rear design of this new GLC, the changes are probably less noticeable than what you have in the front. I don't really think they needed to change a whole lot. It was always a very nice and pleasant, clean, classy design. And really that does continue for this new generation. Yeah, basically it's just adding in the newest Mercedes elements. So really what that is composed of are the taillights. These are their newest taillight design that we saw debut on the S-Class. We've seen drop down all the way to stuff like the C-Class. And let's see if all three elements are LED. So we do have an LED brake light, LED reverse light, as well as amber LED turn signal indicator. This is a really nice looking taillight design and it's gonna be full LED on all models. So three out of three elements, thumbs up from me. I do also wanna point out that we have this black piece intersecting between the taillights. That is because we have the AMG night package. Uh, that's gonna black everything out and give it a nice sporty look. We also have the optional body color spoiler. And then dropping down to this lower area, it's gonna be nice and aggressive because we have the AMG line model. So we have those slits off to the side, which are new this year. We also have an aggressive rear diffuser, some piano black, some matte black, and we also have dual integrated exhaust outlets. These are gonna be finished in chrome, a 3,500 pound tow rating on every GLC too. Now moving on to our wheels, you do have standard 18 inch alloy wheels and a variety of different choices going up to 20 inches. Uh, these are going to be our 19 inch AMG line wheels. As you can see, we do have a black contrast with a few little accents running through. And then I also want to point out with the AMG line package, that is going to get you the body color wheel arches. Now let's move on up here to our mirrors. Mercedes doesn't mess around here. Fully loaded on all models. That means you're going to have heating. You're going to have blind spot monitoring, power folding, and auto dimming. Plus here with the night package, we have the blacked out mirror cap. 
Now at the side of the all new GLC, we have seen an increased length this year. It's up about two inches to 185.7 inches, which does make it longer than the Lexus NX, the Audi Q5. Uh, it's right on par with that of the BMW X3 now. Now, as far as some of the design elements, blacked out window surrounds, blacked out roof rails up top. And even though we do have the body color wheel surrounds, all of this lower area is still gonna be finished in a matte black plastic. Now, I do also want to talk about your safety systems. Mercedes is throwing in two out of your four active safety features as standard equipment, which will be forward emergency braking as well as auto high beam headlamps. Now, of course, they do offer a driver's assistance package, and that will further add in your two other active safety features as well as a traffic jam assistant. But guys, there's an all new interior waiting for you on the inside, and I can't wait to show you all the technology that Mercedes has thrown in. So let's dive into that. Well, let's go ahead and get inside. First off, let's take a look at our key fob. This is the latest Mercedes design using real aluminum here on the outside edges. And then you have the matte black plastic on the inside. Uh, of course, you do have standard smart entry. Remote start is available via the Mercedes app. And to get inside, just grab behind the handle. That will unlock the door. Now go ahead and take a look at this all new interior design. Definitely takes a lot of characteristics from the recent Mercedes models we've seen, including the S-Class and the C-Class. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some general materials and our seats. So we do have the MB Tex on today's example. This is what's gonna be standard on the GLC. You will, of course, have available real leather if you prefer that. This is a good imitation leather. Uh, as you can see, you've got a lot of stitching details and perforation inside. We also have the sport design seat because we have the AMG line, so it's going to give us thicker bolsters here on the side. Now, as far as the seats themselves, these are going to be 16-way power adjusting, and that's standard on all Mercedes models. You do have your adjustments up here on the door. So as you can see, you're just going to put the pressure on, and that's what's actually going to move the seats, just like the most recent Mercedes models. Standard three-person memory seating. You also have standard heated seats and then ventilation is an extra cost option. Let's go ahead and climb inside. Now, as you climb inside, you do have a little bit of an animation and a uh, sound effect that you may have picked up on. And let's start out by just going through the overall materials inside of this cabin because at first glance, it really looks very luxurious. So let's see if all the materials indeed are luxurious. So over here on the door trim, we've got uh, full leather through here with stitching detail. This area is gonna be finished in an aluminum trim, as well as our four fully automatic window switches will also be aluminum. Moving to the upper part here, we actually have a smoother Nappa-like leather trim for this part, which does continue all across the upper dashboard. This is one of the things that's included when you choose the AMG line package. Moving down below, we've got a lot of wood trim. This beautiful waterfall of open pour walnut wood trim. Feels and looks great. And then the center console area, this is gonna be finished in a piano black trim. And of course you do have padding along the console for your knee to rest against. Well, let's go ahead and fire it up. But like always, let's go ahead and move into a first person perspective for a closer look at all the interior details. First off, let's take a look at our gauge cluster. So we do have a standard 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster on board. Uh, this is typical Mercedes. You've got a lot of different designs that you can choose between. Just use this little button on the steering wheel. You can switch all three different places to different designs as well as customize that to the drive mode. Now, in addition to that, you can get a head-up display as an option, but we don't have it on today's example. Now, moving on back here, let's take a look at this brand new steering wheel. As you can see, this is the latest design. It is straight from the AMG products, basically. So a very aggressive look for this GLC with the AMG line package, flat bottom, thick rim. We do have the perforated leather over here, so it feels excellent in the hands. And you've got that cool design where you can actually... Uh, have the gap between the different buttons as well as up here on the stocks themselves. Now the wheel is going to be power adjusting. We also have the optional heating. Now let's go ahead and take a look at interior storage next. So let's open up our center console. First off, we have a little bin here. This is removable. 
And then once you get that out of the way, you have a pretty nicely sized console. It goes down a decent ways. It's fully felt lined, and we also have a couple USB ports inside as well as illumination. But let's put it to the test. Doesn't matter if you drive a Mercedes, everyone likes to save money on food, so it does fit our coupons in there just fine. Now underneath of this area here, that's where you're gonna find the rest of your storage. So you do have an area here where you can stick things. Uh, one of your cup holders is going to be multifunction. So if you press down on that, it becomes a cup holder or you can just get it out of the way for additional storage. You will have a standard wireless phone charging pad back there and another USB port. Now, of course, one of the ways that Mercedes frees up space over here is the fact that all their models use a column electronic shifter. Very simple operation, just reach up here and press down for drive. You do have paddle shifters right there on the steering wheel and press up for reverse. When you go into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera on all models, uh, but we have the available 360 degree camera system on this version. As you can see, we do have active trajectory and then new this year is the fact that we've got the 3D view. Everyone really loves this feature and it's easy to see why. It is outrageously detailed, probably one of the very best 3D views I've ever seen on any vehicle. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, uh, just outrageously detailed. So if you still hit something in this vehicle while you're backing up, you are really sincerely a bad driver. Sorry to break the news to you. And then of course, just press the end of the stock for park. Now, before we hop into the large new display, which is where a lot of the vehicle functions are gonna be located, let's take a look at this bar down below. This right here is where you're gonna change your drive modes. You also notice we do have the new fingerprint sensor. This is for uh, syncing your settings so that you can have different driver profiles inside of the vehicle. And then off to the right hand side of that is going to be your volume slider for the sound system. So since we have the exclusive trim level today, uh, we've got the 710 watt 15 speaker Burmester surround sound system. So let's go ahead and give that a sample right now. So overall sound quality of this system is really good as you would expect. Plus it's gonna get you these really nice looking metal speaker grills. All right, now it's time to get into the display. So what do we have here? This is the new 11.9 inch uh, portrait style display system. The lower section of it is going to be devoted to climate controls primarily, although you do have some audio functions down there as well. Getting into the climate controls, it is a dual zone automatic setup. Very simple to adjust. You're just gonna press those little buttons there to change your temperature. Any additional functions you can access by clicking the climate menu and that will bring that up. As I already mentioned, you do have the heated and ventilated seat controls over there on the door trim. Now, as far as the other things inside of the infotainment system, course running the brand new uh, MBUX system. This is wireless Android Auto you're looking at right now. You do of course have also wireless Apple CarPlay and if we go back into the main MBUX system itself it does look the same as pretty much all the other Mercedes models so you won't be uh, confused if you had a previous Mercedes model when you get into this. It's just that everything displays a lot bigger and seems to be a lot smoother so this is what the built-in navigation system looks like and you do also have the availability of augmented reality navigation. Now of course in a Mercedes I cannot skip over the ambient lighting. They do this better than pretty much anybody else. We do have 64 color ambient lighting it's going to be in all types of areas in the vehicle, including these really lovely um, round vents that have a very snappy sound to them when you touch them. Of course, it's going to be on your door trims, and you can even see it here in broad daylight running down this console. Moving up here to the mirror, we do have an auto dimming one with Homelink Universal Remotes as standard equipment. And just like with the door trim up here, we now have kind of this floating panel. It actually does have ambient lighting around it as well. And we have a touch capacitive sensor for things like our 
panoramic sunroof. So with the GLC 300, you will have a standard, standard size sunroof and an available panoramic one. As you can see, we do have that option. We've got the power sunshade and Mercedes does say that for 2023, this area between the two panels is slimmer than before. Well, how good is the all-new Mercedes GLC's rear seat? Let's go ahead and find out. Now, as far as the space figures are concerned, let's go ahead and knock that out first. 37.4 inches of legroom, 39.6 inches of headroom. That's a really good amount of headroom, guys. Uh, definitely for someone of my size, as far as how the space uh, is compared to its competition, it's going to be right on par with Audi Q5, BMW X3, all those rivals. It's just about the same. Now, as far as the space behind uh, the seating position and our, our knee space here, we have about six and a half inches of space. I also want to point out, look at this. There is a ton of room. I could feel like I could play soccer up underneath the here between the floor and the seat itself. So even if you have big clump and feet, you're going to be fine back here in the GLC. Now, as far as the features are concerned, of course, this is a luxury vehicle. We do have standard rear air vents. Um, I do believe you have the option of four zone climate control. So if you want to, you could probably option that on. We don't have full information just yet on this all new GLC because we are very early in getting this review. Down below that, no USB ports, which I'm a little bit surprised to see. Dropping this center armrest down, we do have a nice one. If we pop this out, this is perfect for your phone to hold it. And then we do also have two cup holders that will additionally pop out. Heated rear seats are probably an option as well. Once again, we're not exactly sure about that. And then turning to the door trim, we're gonna have a very similar one to the front. We have that really nice leather up here at the top part. We have leather on the armrest portion, the floating window switch design, as well as this floating area right here. It's all gonna be finished in a really nice ambient light that you might even be able to see here since it's a little darker outside. And then down in the very bottom, we have two cup holders. Now walking up to the tailgate, as you would expect out of a luxury vehicle, a power one is standard. You also have the hands-free ability as well. So just kick your phone under the bumper to open it up. As you can see, it works really well. The Germans do this the right way. Now, as far as the space is concerned back here, we're looking at 21.9 cubic feet behind the second row seats. If we fold those seats down, we do not actually have a full cargo figure for that just yet. Like I've mentioned, this is an early review, so we don't have full, full information, but I'd say it's about the same as last year, maybe up a few cubic feet as a maximum. So I'd say mid fifties, if I'm remembering correctly for what the previous GLC was. Um, as far as the space behind the second row, that's actually up 2.5 cubic feet for this all new GLC model. Now, you probably saw me use these little switches right here. Mercedes makes it super easy to fold the seats. You just push these little switches right here and they will fold all the way down. They are also 40-20-40 split folding, which is a nice premium feature uh, that they're throwing in. We do also have a cargo cover up top. And if we lift up the cargo floor, there is a spare tire integrated under here. Well, guys, here we are behind the wheel of the all-new Mercedes GLC 300. Now, we are some of the first people to drive the U.S. spec version of this GLC model, so we're extremely excited to show you what this car is all about behind the wheel. We will be talking about a lot of different other things, as you can see on the screen right now, but we will go ahead and start with a hard acceleration to see what this 2-liter turbo can do. All right, nice. There's an acceleration up to 60 miles per hour. So as we talked about with the spec dump, the overall powertrain situation for the GLC 300 is not radically different than before, but we do have a new mild hybrid setup and we have 255 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. So importantly, we do have more torque than last year, even though the overall power figure is about the same as it was before. And the power delivery is just so smooth, so refined. They really have knocked down these two liter turbo fours to just make them so, so good. Um, and if you're curious about a zero to 60, we're looking at 6.2 seconds. So very quick zero to 60 figure, even though this is just the standard GLC 300 model. Um, you can also get performance versions. They will come out a little bit later. Right. The GLC 300 will be, you know, the first one that you can get. Yeah, but. This is what we have now, but you know, this is a Mercedes after all, so we should have, you know, 43 and 63 versions coming up in the future.
Yeah, I can certainly feel the low end torque. Even when you're uh, you know, accelerating more gingerly, like I just was, that torque really propels you forward um, in a really nice way. Let's talk a little bit about the transmission as well. So we've got a nine speed automatic transmission going through the gears, very nice and smooth, of course, as you'd expect. If I put my foot down, we get more power delivered pretty much immediately. We're in the comfort mode right now as far as the drive mode is concerned. So this is the you know more laid back way yeah. to travel. Most people will probably you know choose to stay in this mode a lot if you own one of these, but we do have a sport mode as well and that will change things such as um, how quick you have those shifts. It's a good strong motor yeah. for sure. That was the sport mode um, for that acceleration. Like I said, uh, you know, increases the throttle response, changes the transmission uh, shift, and also the sound as well. So there's a little bit of that engine sound amplification. You know, but while we're going 55 here, I do want to get a sound level reading so we can compare to some of the rivals in comfort mode, of course. We're settling in at 55.8 decibels, which is certainly a good sound level reading for a luxury vehicle in terms of how that compares to the competition. That actually places it on the quieter end of the segment for sure. It's actually a little bit quieter than the previous generation GLC, which was already one of the quietest in the entire segment. Yeah, and Mercedes did say that this new generation will be available with, uh, or the new generation is emphasizing quietness and it also is available with an acoustically tuned glass as an option. Now, in terms of your ride quality, let's go ahead and knock that out while we're cruising down the highway here. The ride quality is very good. Now, we do have the AMG line, which of course is gonna add a little bit more sporty elements to the GLC, but the GLC is definitely more comfort oriented than anything else. This is you know, not a sports car. If you want something that's a lot sportier, go for the 43 or the 63 or the 63S, whenever those cars come out. Mercedes makes that for you. The GLC 300 is really about comfort. And you can totally feel that when you hit a bump, it soaks it up really well. The seats are comfortable. I have no complaints when it comes to the ride quality, and it seems very much on par, if not a little bit better than most in the entire segment. Let's talk a little bit about uh, driving dynamics. Uh, we've got a little bit of a corner coming up here. It's not the best route for that, but this is a very luxury focused vehicle like Mason was saying. That being said, all German cars really seem to have yeah. a certain amount of athleticism built in. I'm happy to report that this one does as well, and honestly it feels a little bit sportier I think with the steering versus the previous generation. This is still lightweight, but even here in the comfort mode I'm getting a quicker response, yeah. which I really like. And as we kind of go around this corner, we'll see how body roll is managed here. Oh, not bad, not bad. Uh, pretty well managed, plus you have these really thick bolsters that hold your body in place nicely. Now as we come to a stop here, pay attention to our tachometer. One thing you'll notice, as I'm still rolling forward, the engine was already off. That really is a big part of our mild hybrid system we were talking about earlier. What that really means in practice is you have a system that does marginally increase power, but its main purpose is to power smooth auto start stops. So this can actually turn off when the vehicle is under light loads. Uh, when you're coming to a stop, the engine will go ahead and shut off, and then it is just ridiculously smooth when yeah. it comes to the restart. Which just that's insane. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Mercedes has the auto start stop uh, award in our minds of the smoothest auto start stops. I'm really happy to see that here on the GLC model because previously it was reserved for, you know, the more expensive models, the GLS, the GLE, you know, and now we see it here on the GLC and it is just so, so incredibly good. And that's probably also a reason 
why the fuel economy is improved for this 2023 model because it has that more advanced technology that it can stay off longer and it can turn off as you go to a stop. Uh, we're sitting at 25, 32, 28 miles a gallon combined with the rear drive model. If you go for the 4MATIC all-wheel drive, which I assume most of you will, we're still sitting at 26 miles a gallon combined, which is really phenomenal fuel economy for the segment. That's going to be up 2 mpg over uh, the previous uh, GLC 300 formatic, and if you go for the rear drive, that's actually up 4 mpg over the rear drive model. So big, big fuel economy enhancements this year. That's going to save you for sure at the pump. My only thing is that I really wish uh, Mercedes would go ahead and bring in the plug-in hybrid GLC. That would be a really cool addition to the lineup. And now it's time to do one of our other signature elements, our slam dunk and air ball. What's our favorite thing and our least favorite thing about this all-new GLC? Now, I will kick us off with the slam dunk and just say that they did a good job with this redesign of doing the things that they needed to do, but not like doing too much to alienate their clientele, because GLC was already a phenomenal car. Uh, the previous generation was still one of our favorites because it was just so well-rounded sure. in every aspect, and they didn't need to change much, and they didn't change a radical amount, but they did what they needed to. The updated technology, the updated styling, you know, right. all of this. All the things you loved really about well. what yeah. the GLC already had, plus all the latest and greatest from the Mercedes lineup. Now, on the airball side of things, we're going to actually nitpick something really kind of specific, but uh, this panel here of the console yeah. being finished completely in piano black, I think that's a dangerous move. This is an area of the car where people tend to touch a lot when you get in and out of the vehicle, and I feel that this is going to get scratched up, and I, even though it looks fine now, I think that it's going to get scratched up and look kind of bad in a few years. And lastly here, let's talk about our warranty. It's going to be Mercedes Signature Warranty for your 50,000 miles for your basic and powertrain. No complimentary maintenance is included on the GLC. And how much is this GLC going to cost? Well, we're going to start at $47,100 for the 300 rear drive model. 4MATIC is $49,100. That's going to be about a three dollars to $4,000 price increase for the GLC. Um, that's pretty normal for an all-new model as well as just general inflation now, um, but still pretty affordable in the grand scheme of things in the Mercedes lineup. And as far as this one right here, we're looking at about $10,000 of options uh, plus the 1150 destination, $59,920 for this GLC as tested. And that's where we're going to leave off on this in-depth review of the all-new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. By doing so, you help give us access to vehicles like these, where we're some of the first people to sample out the U.S. spec Mercedes GLC. By doing so, you really help that happen. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. It really means a lot to us. Also, take the chance to follow us on TikTok and Instagram. We also have a merch store, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.